A new poll, a major poll showing support for President Trump's border wall at an all-time high. ABC News, Washington Post, finding 42% of Americans surveyed want a wall on our southern border. That's up from 34% just last year. And this comes as the radical Dems refuse to attend a meeting today with the president to talk about border security. Reportedly, six of the Dems include Stephanie Murphy, Lou Correa, Charlie Crist, David Scott, Abigail Spanberger, and Scott Peters. That's right. None of the leadership was uh, invited. Joining me now, Congressman Sean Duffy of Wisconsin. He's a member of the House Financial Services Committee. It is great to have you with us. And, and let's start with a shutdown. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't know that I've ever heard of a White House inviting uh, members without their leadership. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, I've heard of that, Lou, but I've never heard of members being invited to the White House and turning the offer down. I was in Congress for six years with Barack Obama, uh -huh. never invited me to the Oval Office. And he didn't he had, invite you? Gone. Never. Sure. I know, Lou, I, but I, I, I can't imagine that these members wouldn't go over and sit down and have a conversation yeah. with the president. And what this shows is they are, they've dug their heels in so far, Lou. They don't care about the migrants that are dying on this dangerous journey to our border or the sexual assaults of young girls, the rapes that take place with little girls or the drugs that yeah. are flowing into my communities or the, or, the, or the gang members or the convicts or the terrorists that come into our country and don't keep us. They don't care. They care about a political win because they hate President Trump, and it's sad. It's too bad. It's, as I've said on this broadcast uh, repeatedly, there's only one reason that Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer do want, want to deny the president the construction of that wall. It would be because that is the only major promise he made in 2016 that he has right. not already fulfilled. And they know That's right. that if he fulfills it, uh, he's, I, in my opinion, he will win anyway. But he would be absolutely unstoppable in 2020 uh, if he Can, succeeds in bringing that wall. You're spot on. And I know your listeners know where you stand. They know the truth. But if you did know the truth, you said, should I believe Chuck and Nancy or should I believe Donald Trump? If you don't know who to believe, ask the men and women on the border, the ones that are charged with keeping yeah. us safe. And if you ask them, they say, no, no, no. We need a wall. We need more technology. We, meet, we need more boots. Donald Trump is absolutely right. And when Democrats say, well, you're racist, 52% of the Border Patrol is Hispanic. So, uh, and I think the more that the Border Patrol get out there and talk about what they're up against to keep America safe, the more America goes, I, okay, I don't see you guys as partisan. I see you as telling me the truth. And as the poll yeah. numbers you mentioned, that's why they're going in our direction, in President Trump's direction, because we're right on the policy. Let's turn to uh, free uh, trade, fair trade, balanced trade, reciprocal trade, which yeah. the president has pushed and is now uh, is getting the world, uh, world's attention. We see Europe moving in the direction of the Trump administration on this issue. Balanced trade should be something that uh, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, every major major regional association, whether it's ASEAN, whether it is uh, the European Union, which is a little more than an association now, despite what's happening with Brexit. I, I mean, this is a world that needs balanced trade. And I think right. most Americans would be stunned to know how little is in the arsenal of the president uh, in order to, uh, to demand, insist, and follow through on balanced trade. That's right. And this is something you've talked about a, a lot as well, Lou. So the president doesn't have the greatest tools to make sure that we have not just free trade, but fair trade. So this Thursday, I'm going to drop a bill, the Reciprocal Trade Act, which is going to allow the president to say, OK, Europe, you have a 10 percent tariff on our autos uh, and we only have a two and a half percent tariff on your autos. We're going to give the president the authority to raise our tariff to 10 percent to match the European auto. Uh, auto uh, tariff. And once they reduce theirs, the president can reduce those tariffs as well with butter. I produce a lot of butter in my district. There's a 68 percent tariff in Europe on Wisconsin butter. In America, we have a 3.8 percent tariff when they import it. Right. It's more than more than 200 percent uh, than the, the, the American tariff. So we want to not just have free trade. We want to make it fair. And we're trying to give the president the tools uh, to, to make sure that we're not robbed anymore. But like you've always talked about, Lou, and so is the president, this is about the American worker. Let's make sure we can produce products and sell them around the world without one hand tied behind our back instead of letting the rest of the world uh, uh, block us because of their, their, of their tariffs and then come to our markets and sell and compete
it against our workers. It's absolutely unfair. And so we're going to give the president the tools necessary to not just fight, but win the war for the American worker. So let me, I've got to ask this. Where are the Koch brothers? Where is the Chamber of Commerce, the Business Roundtable in Wall Street? I'm sure they're excited about Congressman Duffy bringing forward the Reciprocal Trade Act. Yeah, so the, so the Chamber of Commerce came out um, and tried to sandbag this, this movement to give the president more tools, uh, basically saying we're just trying to raise yeah. uh, tariffs. We're not. By the way, this gets us further away from a tariff war and brings us to tariff peace. We don't want tariffs, Lou, because if we have fair trade and free trade, the American worker, the American manufacturer will win. And sometimes I think some of these organizations, they just care about selling stuff. They don't care as much about making the stuff where our families and our Americans work. Yeah, absolutely. And as you say, uh, you may not like tariffs or may not even want them right now. But we sure as hell want this president to have the power to raise tariffs on countries that treat us in the fashion that they've become accustomed to over That's the right. last 30 years uh, under previous administrations who let them, uh, uh, well, play us for fools. And hey, Lou, if I can make one pitch, if, sure. uh, if, if your listeners want to call the member of Congress and say, hey, get on this bill and give the president the authority and the tools necessary to win this fight for America, that would be great. I think they heard you loud and clear, and I'm sure Thank we'll you. oblige. Congressman, <laughs> good to have you with us. Hey, thanks, thanks so much, Lou. Congressman Sean Duffy.